Hey brothers and sisters, it is uh, March 27th. We're still here, still maybe a few more days. I'm still hoping before May 14th and um, uh, revelation12.com did an amazing video about Passover, which I learned a lot about Elijah, which uh, I always love to learn about Elijah. Um, so anyway, I'm just checking in. Um, I have a lot of different subjects and I don't really know where the Lord wants me to go. So um, I think I want to talk about who are you really listening to? Now, when um, we know that the serpent said, D did God really say that? No, that is what the serpent says. But you know what else? We need to be asking people, did God really say that? Did God really tell you to go do that, which was sin? That's not God. So we have to learn that there are voices besides the voice of God, right? There's the voice of your of what you want, your will. There is the voice of the devil. There's the voice of others. There's the voice of uh, how you were raised, your history. There's a lot of different voices going on in your head. <laughs> so, um, so I wanted to uh, share a few things. Okay, now first of all. I feel a little bit responsible, uh, and I don't normally mention people's names that that often. Um, but um, I had told people about humble servant, and so I do feel like I need to speak up because I I know I was his 97th subscriber, and I think he's got 1,700 in a very short time. Now I love I love that brother. I believe he truly does love the Lord. Um, but his eschatology is really off. Um, I believe he's watching for Jesus and he's excited about Jesus, but he hasn't really been very teachable with other people trying to tell him, Hey, you know, so these are some of the things that he insists upon, which are just not true. Uh, he insists that tribulation began in 2015. Not true. He insists that there are um, there are two brides. Not true. He insists that there is a mid-trib har harvest and a post-trib harvest. Not true. Now, you know, uh, I I have a playlist with a lot of videos about the pre-tribulation rapture. And I did see a survey yesterday that said 84% of born-again believers believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Um, which is why I'm always trying to encourage people to be ready any moment, any day. Like, it could happen right this moment. Um, for those who love Jesus and love is appearing. Um, so 84%, I wrote it down, it was like 84% believe in pre-trib. Then there were... Like three or four percent that believe in mid, there was something about two percent that believe in post, then there was something around three percent that believe in pre wrath. So, all these different eschatologies, we are not supposed to sow discord among the brethren. But as someone who has um, been told by God to talk about the rapture, and that's why I started this channel. Um, you know, there are a lot of channels that you can talk about um, just Bible study. And then there are a lot of channels that you can talk about all the news events. Um, but I feel a responsibility to balance Bible teaching. And Lexi is, you can't see it. Lexi, you see, there's Lexi's nose. <laughs> She's, you want to come up and say hello? You want to come up and say hello? Yeah, you do? Okay. All right. Over here. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Lexi says, hello, look over there at the camera. Uh, Lexi, we just did another uh, hospital visit, a new visit for us, which was very interesting, and actually met someone whose dog is named Blessings, and they are in a cancer, they're in cancer treatment, and they were doing really well, and they said that every day they are thanking the lord for all of their blessings and that he's really been he's been doing great in his chemo 
And these people, they just, um, they had an attitude of gratitude for the Lord. So um, that was really encouraging to me. And the funny thing too was there was a woman uh, who is, she sort of takes us around. She's a very joyful, happy person. Are you thinking you're done? Okay. And, uh, and y'all, by the way, those flowers are still, I haven't lost a petal. I can't say that they look as fresh as they did, but um, they, <laughs> I'm being blessed that they just keep on hanging on. The leaves, uh, the green leaves are not quite as good as they were, but I haven't had a single petal fall from them. And they are real, so, you know, it's, I just put them in. Maybe some people like God's flowers, His creation. Okay, where was it? Oh, so, um, it was a new visit today. It was just um, me and one other dog. But the strange thing was, last night I had a dream about praying for the woman at the hospital who takes us around and that it was a dream to pray for her healing. So today when I got there, I said, uh, after we'd been going around a little while and we were standing around in the hall, I said, um, I said, I said, I don't know if you think this is nuts, but I did have a dream about you and I can't say I've had any dreams about any other people at the hospital, um, but I had a dream that you look like you're in pain and I wanted, and I was praying for you to be healed. Um, so if you want me to do that, I'll be, I'll be glad to do that. So it turned out that when we went to her office for me to pray for her healing, um, I said, you know, is, I, I'm offering, is this something you want? And she said, oh yeah, I would love it. She'd had, uh, she had shoulder pain. She'd had, since college, she'd had, uh, she actually had a toe replacement. I didn't even know you could have a toe replacement. Um, she'd had a lot of surgeries and pains and stuff like that. But the strangest thing was, she said, but I'm an atheist. She said, my, I grew up Catholic. My mother is an excellent Catholic, and my mother prays for me all the time. But I just decided that I didn't believe. I love Jesus, but I don't believe in God. Well, y'all, there's, the, you know, there's a person who's confused. Um, and so you treat them with gentleness and love and... Um, you don't try to, you don't try to like bombard them. You just try to show them that the love of God. I, you know, I said, you may be an atheist, but I had a dream about you, so God loves you, and and I will be willing to pray. So, you know, it was it was not my prophet voice. All of this, you know, because when I talk to y'all, it's my prophet voice. I get pumped up and I get loud. Oh, and by the way, anybody who's who's still with me. If you think I'm a Jezebel because I wear jewelry and makeup, then uh, you can you can say bye. <laughs> you can say bye. Um, in fact, I changed my um, well. One of my screensavers is a is the sunset, right? But I also changed the changed uh, the other one to a swan. And so that's me, and that can be you. That you just flap your wings and just shake off these attacks. And, and I have a funny thing to say about it at the end, I think. But anyway, but no, I did. So she, she doesn't believe in a God. She thinks it's a hip, you know, it's hypocritical to be, um, saying you're a Christian and, um, when she doesn't believe that there is a God, but then she also, uh, three times she said, I love Jesus. So pray in Jesus name. So y'all let's pray for Maria. Wouldn't it be great if God would just do some kind of miraculous healing and then she would go, whoa, whoa, you know, what happened? <laughs> that prayer actually worked. Um, and on Monday, my car started, uh, on Sunday, my car started leaking uh, power steering fluid. So on Monday, I took it into the shop. It's only like straight down my road. And, um, and so while I was there, I was there for about an hour and a half. And I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I pulled out my little pocket Bible and opened to Acts, which the strangest thing was, I had been in Acts that morning. And so I was reading Acts for about an hour and a half. And, you know, if you haven't read Acts lately, oh my goodness, I mean, it will, it will just inspire you that the sky's the limit. Who's to say that God can't do something, right? Um, I just love, I love to read about what the disciples did. So anyway... There was a, a man working at the car shop that a couple of times I heard him um, 
really complaining about knee pain. Like, oh my goodness, my knee is just killing me. My knee's just killing me. And I was just there to get my car fixed. And I know, I mean, I know uh, the guy that owns the shop. Actually, his mother was in Bible study at my house. Is this, I mean, it's just like everything is such a small world. His mother was at Bible study at my house for, oh, probably about a year and um, until uh, they told me that my daughter couldn't participate in the Bible study. And then I said, well, I guess we're not going to be doing the Bible study here because the older women are supposed to be including the younger women. And they did not want the, my daughter there because they wanted to sit there and complain about their husbands all, all during the Bible study. You know, a lot of Bible studies are not Bible studies. A lot of Bible studies are just gossip and slander and uh, poor pitiful me, woe is me, woe is me, and there's no victory. There's no victory. Anyway, as I'm sitting there and I'm going, wow, God, you know, I could I could uh, go pray for his knee. You know, his name is Bill. It's like, I could go pray for his knee like they did in Acts, right? But you would have to tell me that's what you want me to do. You know, when we try to do things on our own, that is our own works. But what we are supposed to be tapped into is the Holy Spirit's works. Okay? So, I like, like about three or four times, I'm like, God, do you want me to do that? And he's, yes. And I'm like, really, God? Because they're going to think I'm crazy, you know. I, it's always funny. God, uh, one time when I, he told me to do something, I said, oh God, if I do that, they're going to look at me like I have a hole in my head. And he said, no, you have a locust leg hanging out of the side of your mouth. So that's a funny thing too, with the fact that, um, uh, I, I have a message like John the Baptist in that repent, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and repent is not lip service. Repent is actually to repent to turn away from doing the same sins that you used to do. And then to keep on asking, what else do I need to repent of? What else do I need to get cleaned up? Not that we got cleaned up to begin with, but that we are being purified to be God's holy bride, to be Jesus' holy bride. So um, so then as I was getting up, so, uh, he, you know, Carlisle calls me over and he says, Terry, we can't find the leak in your car. <laughs> I said, Okay, maybe God healed my leak in my car because I was just supposed to come here. And I said, I said, Carlisle, um, I feel like the Lord wants me to pray for Bill. Would he be open to that? And Carlisle said, yeah, you know, Bill's a Christian and I'm sure he's been having a lot of pain with his knee. I'm sure he would like for you to do that. So he brought Bill out of the shop area and I told Bill um, I was going to pray for his knee. And so we, we you know, I did I, I, and I did pray with a, with a powerful voice because um, he is a real Christian, according to Carlisle. And I, I know Carlisle is a real Christian. So anyway, um, and it turned out he's like, wow, oh, my knee feels better. And I went, oh, I forgot to ask you. I was like, what was your knee pain before? He said, well, it was like a nine, but now it's like a five or six. And I went, I said, okay, I want you to go sit down. I looked to check his legs and everything. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit was like, Pray for his hip. Pray for his hip. The hip was causing the knee problem. Now, I've had that same situation. So, I prayed for his hip to be in alignment and everything. And then he's like, wow, I feel really good. And he's walking around. And I said, I'm walking with him. I was like, okay, okay, this is great. And so, then I told him, now you have to change your thoughts. I said, now, if you, because I had also prayed for the nerves to not be able to send pain messages to the brain. But um, I told him now what you have to do is you have to change your way of speaking because I was hearing you complain about the pain, but now if you start to get the pain back, you need to, to speak differently to yourself instead of speaking out, oh, oh no, I'm starting to get the pain back. You have to speak out, thank you. You have to speak out praise, gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Thank you. Thank you for your blood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And and you have to fight going back to where you used to be. Plus, I also did ask him if he takes fish oil, which he does. But I told him to double the amount of fish oil because um, fish oil is a natural anti-inflammatory. And it's also food for your brain. 
there are a lot of people that are uh, their brains are unhealthy because they're not getting uh, the proper oils and I take fish oil and black seed oil and turmeric all of that is to reduce inflammation and pain is caused from inflammation okay now I'm being kind of like the mom <laughs> okay anyway uh, it was just really funny because I just had a really wonderful time uh, letting the Holy Spirit use me and I was praising God as I was driving back and it's just a little it's like three minute drive and I look up and there is a car tag which says CGQ 5228 and I don't know, you know, if you've been with me for a while, you might remember that one time God woke me up and said, eighth day, and I jumped, and it was 522, which is fruit of the Spirit. Eighth day is the circumcision of our heart, where Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day. Um, I've done, you know, I've done a lot of videos about different things, but I thought, Christ, God, and queens. And we are all queens. We are queens in humble submission to our king jesus we are going to be with him in heaven as his bride as as he loves us he loves us and he wants to, he wants us to make it he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance so that was just a cool thing to only look at one car tag and just be able to continually get a message from the lord um that we're on the right track Okay, so um, over the weekend, though, as far as people not hearing from God, um, there is a watchman that I have been talking to for about, oh, I guess about six months. About six months ago, I met with him, and we had a lunch for like six hours. And uh, he's a divorced man who had just gotten born again um, December of 2017. And he has a YouTube channel with about 1,700 subscribers, I think, maybe. And he just would not accept what Jesus had to say about getting remarried. So, um, you know, it breaks my heart. But, you know, when Jesus tells you something to do, it's not what you want to do. And um, he kept trying to come up with excuses and, oh, oh, I know the Holy Spirit told me that I can have a new wife. And... And I wasn't really watching that much of him on YouTube, but he did do a, a message on um, James chapter 4. And I was like, uh-oh, because in the message of James chapter 4, it says, you adulterers. So um, he had repented and uh, gotten saved in December 2017. He had repented of adultery and drugs and alcohol and all this stuff that he had repented of but to go back into it is the parable of the soils um, so as it turns out I mean it's it's a good thing when I know that the Lord has told me um, has given me correct doctrine and discernment and so um, I had spent I had invested a lot of time in this man and then over the weekend, um, well, on March, I sent him an email at the end of February. I think it was February 24th. I sent him an email. And y'all, he puts Rapture Ready in all caps in his uh, titles. Rapture Ready in all caps. But then he's not living Rapture Ready because I... I gave him a correction in a in an email on february 24th then i see that he does this email uh, excuse me this video talking about how he wanted to that god was going to move him and give him a place to live and that was what he wanted that he wanted to do this and then on march 9th god told me he's moving to texas to go live with a couple so i called him up and i left him a message and i said hey you didn't say in your video where you're going, but God told me you're moving to Texas to go live with a couple. He didn't call me back. He didn't thank me for, you know, giving him a confirmation as to what he thought that the Lord was telling him, which is always a problem. And then over the weekend, I had two, um, two friends contact me that since March 9th, when I gave him that prophecy, he had moved to Texas 
he had moved in with a couple, he had moved out with the couple, and he had gotten married since March 9th. And it's March 24th or something when he's doing this video about how God has made his dreams come true. <sighs> Y'all, no, that's not going to be rapture ready. Um, and that's not God. God will never tell you to do something that goes against the scriptures. And if you think, and I, I mean, I'm so sorry, but if you think that, that God will tell you that you're so special that you don't have to obey what this Bible says, you are deceived. And it is 1 Corinthians 6, um, 9 and 10. Don't be deceived. Adulterers, fornicators, idolaters you know basically what it is idolatry also because you've made it that oh i have arrived i have arrived with jesus he's my best friend he's my buddy and so he wants me to be happy he wants me to um live to please myself and just do these youtube videos just so i can preach to people and show my uh holy spirit goosebumps um you know the um the false prophets prophesied, right? And the um, in the in Moses' day, when he was doing the miracles, the plagues, the sorcerers were able to do the same thing. On I think the first three of the plagues, they were able to turn the Nile to blood. Okay, there are some really fine deceived false prophets false teachers um yeah okay so let's see so i was really sad about that but um but then i know what i know i know that i delivered a true prophecy and he did not take wise counsel at the same time um for the last couple of weeks i've been dealing with um uh, a friend who I've come to realize isn't, I mean, the Holy Spirit said failure to progress. And y'all, I've had God tell me that before with other people that I've poured my life into. And um, failure to progress. And that's when you have, you know, we're supposed to be giving of ourselves, right? We are supposed to give, give, give acts of kindness, love, encouragement. We have to give, 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 but there is a certain point where God says you've done what you needed to do, and those people haven't listened to you. They, um, they've wanted to be entertained by you. I read the Ezekiel 33 uh, end of the chapter. You know, they want to be entertained on YouTube instead of getting out of the boat and walking on water themselves. So I'm not, I'm not doing anything. To help you if you are going to stay stuck in the boat <laughs> right I, I'm trying to encourage you I'm trying to tell you um, wow these are some of the things that I have going on walking by the Spirit but you have to do your own walking it's like a baby when the baby's learning to walk you you got to get the baby out of the stroller <laughs> right you can't just be taking the baby around the stroller. So I can't be taking you around in the stroller going, yeah, I'm teaching, I'm teaching, I'm teaching without you getting out there and experiencing it yourself. Um, and so I'm pretty sure that that relationship, I, you know, I, I've done, I've done what I'm supposed to do. But, but the thing is when you are not providing, um, the same amount of, um, uh, excitement, or, uh, you know, like, you don't want to join in with the things that they want to do. Like, you know, I've been there where I had the complaining spirit. And, uh, you know, I was studying the life of Moses. And I was like, oh, God, I don't want to be complaining like those Israelites. I don't. And so I don't really, I don't like to join in with complainers. I don't like to join in with critical spirits. Um, you know, um, I'm not a professional counselor and a professional counselor is being paid to listen to your complaining. Um, but I'm not a professional counselor. I am trying to minister and, and grow you up. 
Uh, in fact, I was reading Romans 1, and I decided to read... You know, that's the thing, too. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm on a little bit of a rant. But for me to start a relationship with you, I'm giving you my, my oil. I'm, I'm trying to share with you to build up your flame, your fire. You know, stoke you. Get you stoked. Get you pumped. But you have to do, in a relationship, which is different from YouTube, you have to, in a friendship, you have to be giving back. And, and building up the other person. Um, and so when you say, well, I've read the Bible. I've read it through several times. Oh, I used to teach Bible study. Oh, I used to uh, write letters to people. Oh, I used to preach. I used to, 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 and that is used to. Um, what is God saying? You got out of the game. You're sitting on the bench. And that's not what a disciple does. A disciple has to get off the bench and get in the game and say, Coach, put me in, Coach. I'm ready to play. <laughs> I could start singing that song. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, maybe I won't sing right now. Um, and, oh, I, maybe I will sing. Because as I was thinking about this... Uh, you know, because I mean, I get comments, people saying, saying, wow, you're just, you're just Pollyanna. You're just too positive. They don't understand that I, I got saved from being suicidal for nine months. My testimony is on there. Why would I want to go back to being suicidal? Why, if I've been healed of depression and told by God that I am healed and to get off the antidepressants, why would I want to go to back to depression? I don't. I don't. And I can try to pull you and pull you out of your own depression, but if you're happy there in your depression, you get to stay there. I can't make you come out of it. You know, it's like I can throw you the rope and say, come on, brother, grab on and let's come out of that. You're about to go over the Niagara Falls. But if you don't grab onto the rope because you're so comfortable in your depression, it's, I can't help you. I really can't. And, uh, you know, you're not listening. You think you're listening. You know, you're not listening. Because it's like, it's like going to church and listening to a sermon and you're not personally applying it to your life. You know, you can be watching David Wilkerson all day long. Great, great preacher, end times preacher, but you aren't applying it to your life. You're sitting on the bench wanting to be entertained, and that isn't what God wants for you. Um, in fact, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous place to be. Um, so anyway, I decided um, when I sat down with, I mean, I'm all over, you know, I, I can read the Bible for a long time, which I suggest everybody does. Because if you're going to have a relationship with Jesus that's active, you have to be reading the active, living Word of God. Not by, oh, well, I'm going to do my devotion, or, oh, I'm going to read through the Bible chapter. No, it's got to be like, oh, oh, it's like a puzzle. Like, I'm going, I'm working this Bible. I'm going through it. So I had decided to go through, um, I, I mean, on this particular day when I was thinking about this, I, I went to Romans 1, um, and um, <laughs> this video could go on forever, so I just want to um, say, read, read Romans 1 and read it slowly, but as far as this situation goes with um, who is your friend and, and who isn't, um, Ah, oh, goodness. Where to go? Okay. I, oh, my goodness. Where to go, God? Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey Him, bringing glory to His name. I, I'm disappointed when I see evangelists and rapture watchers and all that still having arguments about what is genuine salvation. I'm, I'm disappointed in that uh, because 
those who truly believe want to obey him and bring glory to his name. They're not uh, arguing about the same stuff still. You are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Jesus Christ. I am writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. These people who don't have peace, they're, uh, they don't have peace because they don't, they're not listening to God. They may have heard him in the past, but they aren't actively listening to God who gives us the fruit of the spirit of love and joy and peace. And I'm, you know, don't try to steal my joy. Don't try to bring down my joy because <laughs> I'm not going there. Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. God knows how often I pray for you day and night. I bring you and your needs in prayer to God whom I serve with all my heart by spreading the good news about his son. We can't be saying, oh, we pray, 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 which, I mean, we do pray. We, we're praying constantly. But we have to pray and then serve with all my heart, spreading the good news about his son. You may spread the good news in your way. I spread the good news in my way. But we have to be spreading the good news. It's just what we have to be doing. One of the things I always pray for is for the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. And yes, we do long to see each other in heaven. For I long to visit you so that I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. That is what a true fellowship, friendship is with another believer. We are trying to encourage, lift up, empower, fire up a person to use their spiritual gift. You have been given at least one gift. And you can't be lazy about using it and expect that when you get to heaven, Jesus is going to say, well done and good and faithful servant. He's not. In, in fact, you may get left behind, which I also have to say, I mean, I don't know who's going to be left behind, but um, but Mark Lang, um, a true servant of God, a humble man, a man who speaks the truth, who tells you to repent and and to walk in obedience and does not condone sin. Sin is going to keep you from being uh, taken. It doesn't matter what you believe about the rapture. Sin is going to hold you back. But he did an excellent, and, he, and I thank him because he redid his video. He reread he re it. Um, but it's an excellent, excellent left behind letter with great detail and great scriptures. And um, he redid it for me. I really do appreciate it. Um, and, um, and so I'm going to put that in the description box. He, he's got the video. He's got the left behind letter, which he will send you. Um, and then decide, you know, like I'm thinking about possibly some people that I could say, hey, can I go through this left behind letter with you and actually read the scriptures with you? Because that's the thing. Um, when someone is talking with you and giving you the scriptures, it's not the same as if you can get somebody to go, hey, let's do some Bible study and let's actually, let's actually read the Bible together. And for them to speak it out themselves, then it goes into their heart because it's coming out into their own uh, airwaves, right? That, that the breath of life that is speaking out the word of God is going into their ears and into their hearts and giving them eyes to see and ears to hear. Um, so when we are together here on YouTube, um, I'm trying to help you to grow strong in using your spiritual gift and I am trying to encourage your faith and then you can also encourage mine um, and I know you know uh, 
I, I, I'm not saying that, well, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, we have different callings, <laughs> right? We have different callings, but you're trying to encourage each other. And so if you are attacking and really letting the accuser, you know, that accuser, that devil, if you're letting the devil use your mouth to accuse somebody of um, them not serving you well enough, they're not um, being at your beck and call well enough, or that, um, that you are going out and loving on other people instead of spending all your time loving on them, um, you know, they're just not joyful, happy people. And they're really not safe people. Maybe someday I'll do a... I mean, I don't know how long we're going to be here. I keep thinking, boy, God, I've, I have taught and taught and taught and people haven't received it. You know, it's like, wow, I can't believe how much I've taught and people don't receive. But it, it's just a sign of the end. It's just a sign of the end that everybody is entrenched now with what they believe and how they think what they think and they're not really listening to each other anymore. Um... Uh, And if you read, if please read Romans 1, because it says, I planned many times to visit you, but was prevented until now. I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit. Um, I'm, I'm going to come back to that. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their, their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship Him as God or even give Him thanks. They took God for granted. It's a serious thing. They began to give up, to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. They made up their own God, their Jesus that makes them want to be happy. As a result, as a result their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God gave them over to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. So that's why a person who can... I mean, a lot of these people who claim to be humble or claim to be wise then they get puffed up with, oh, I'm being used by God, and oh, I can go and sin. When Jesus said, go and sin no more. Um, okay, so I went from, and in and, and Romans 2 to some other things I have underlined, God and his justice will punish anyone who does uh, these wicked things. And then it says, and you can see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin. But because you are stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, you are storing up terrible punishment for yourself. For a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good. Doing good. These are good works, folks. Seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good. For God does not show favoritism. Um, okay, so. Okay, so also. Um, I opened up this morning to um, like Matthew 12 and 13. Um, in Matthew 12, verse 30. Jesus says, anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Well, are we really working with Jesus? 
if we are accepting um, counterfeit Jesuses or um, not living according to the character of Christ. I was just thinking last night before I went to bed, I was thinking about doing a word study on kindness. Kindness. How can you insult and degrade and disrespect people when you're claiming to be a Christian and you are, you are unkind? You're unkind. Um, a tree is identified by his fruit, which was in the Romans thing too, the spiritual fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak? Speak. Our words matter, folks. Our words matter. How could you, evil men like you, speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you speak will either acquit you or condemn you. You know, isn't God gracious that he gave us his words of rebuke? But then, can you accept the rebuke for your own life? I mean, when I'm telling you this, I'm also having to, to examine myself, okay? And I've done a lot of things about examining myself. Um, then the true family of Jesus. We have to discern who is in the true family of God. And then those who are not in the true family, we can, uh, depending on what the Holy Spirit wants us to do, we can just be in the world uh, among them, praying for them, loving them, trying to uh, bring them along. Or God can say, hey, they, it's time to wipe the dust from your feet. Okay? So Jesus says, um, someone told Jesus, your mother and brothers are outside and they want to speak to you. And Jesus said, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? So these people that say, oh, I'm your brother. I'm your sister. Yeah, I'm your brother. I'm your sister. Think about it. They're saying, I'm your brother. I'm your sister. But Jesus says, look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Does the will. Works according to the Holy Spirit. Not fulfilling the desires of the flesh, but walking by the Spirit always. Then it goes on to the farmer. Oh my goodness. And so when a, when a watchman thinks he's arrived and he's repented and he continues and he goes back to the sin. Um, Jesus said, You're permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen... To my teaching. And if you think you're hard of hearing uh, hearing God's word, if, you're, if you've become dull in your hearing of God's word, why don't you take the time just to do a Bible search on, on your online Bible on the word listen or the word obey or the word kindness. Do a word study. And it's, it's, that's how you can start listening to God again. Okay? To those who listen to my teaching more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge but those who are not listening even what little understanding they will have that they have will be taken away from them this is this is serious when you say oh i used to hear from god and you're not hearing from god anymore it's cuz you didn't listen and act and obey what he told you to do and so now you think you're 
either not hearing from God or you think that God's talking to you when it's not in agreement with what the Bible says and you go off off you know off onto your broad road that leads to your own satisfaction instead of obeying the will of God and Jesus says this is why I use these parables for they look but they don't really see they hear but they don't really understand this fulfills the prophecy of what Isaiah said when you hear what I say you will not understand when you see what I do you will not comprehend for the hearts of these people are hardened and their ears cannot hear and they have closed their eyes so their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear I tell you the truth many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see but they didn't see it and they longed to hear what you hear but they didn't hear it now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting the seeds and he goes on to talk about how uh, people, four of the soils, appear to receive the gospel, but only one of the soils endures to the end and is saved. The seed that falls on good ground represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30 or 60 or even 100 times as much as that had been planted the the good soil goes on and I know some of y'all are recently saved and it got the gospel got planted into good soil and you're all about like yeah let's do this let's do that let's do God where are we gonna go what are we gonna do I'd love to serve you this way I'd love to do that um, but those who are like well you know the hardships of life and Oh my goodness, those people have rejected the gospel and I'm just tired of sharing it because they just keep rejecting it. Um, I also wanted to say, um, I opened up to Proverbs 9.32. And so, my dear children, listen to me, for all who follow my ways are joyful. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Don't ignore it. Joyful are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates watching for me outside my home for whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the lord but those who miss me injure themselves all who hate me love death that's proverbs that's uh proverbs 8 32 through 36 and proverbs is about um that's funny i put grace beside there uh, on 10 4 18 <laughs> 10 4 10 4 over and out maybe I'm supposed to finish here um, but I do want to tell you um, another I mean I'm not trying to justify what I look like or anything like that but I know my mission field and uh, my mission field isn't I mean YouTube is YouTube is really for people who are already saved that want to listen and be encouraged um, but my mission field is God, I mean, God told me to stay in my same zip code, 30022. And uh, today, after I'd gone to the hospital, I went to the grocery store and I ran into my husband's best friend's tennis, par uh, tennis partner. My husband's tennis partner, who was my husband's best friend. Now, um, and see, this is why, I, I, you know, as I'm getting ready to go to the hospital, I mean, I don't run around looking like this to go around most places but you know when I go to the hospital um, I feel that God does want me to uh, you know put on some makeup not dress provocatively not trying to be a Jezebel who's trying to entice anybody into sin and if I'm causing you to sin by lust then please don't watch my videos please don't um, but this is why I, I mean it was like God was like see this is why this is why you I wanted you to look presentable and you know the Bible also says that if you're fasting to not look like you're fasting to keep it secret 
How many people are keeping their fasting secret nowadays, right? No. He wants us he wants us to um he wants us to and in fact I've, I've said God, thank you God that I don't have to be like John the Baptist wearing the camel hair and the uh what well, he had a leather belt or something like that. You know, thank you God. But but you can't if you are so I run into my um my husband's, uh, the wife of my husband's best friend, tennis partner. And we have like a 20 minute conversation. Well, when she first sees me, she's not a, uh, she's not a, a born again Christian. So she's not going to judge me by anything but my appearance. Okay. And if I had let myself go and, uh, and was walking around looking depressed and not taking care of myself and everything, then she isn't interested in talking to me because then it's like, oh, oh gosh, you know, that, that's really sad to see that boy, that woman, you know, 10 years since her husband left her and she's just, you know, still stuck in depression and misery and all of that. So no, so she can tell because I am taking care of myself and that I am happy so, you know, I listen to her. She listens to me. It's the normal country club stuff, you know, well, you know, about your kids and, you know, and the great thing is, you know, God gives me excellent memory for names. So I was like, you know, asking her about her husband, um, asking about her, her parents and her in-laws who I had met and everything and, and they're not doing well. And she did, she was like, you know, she did admit that, um, she had done all these things. She used to do all this charity work. Um, she uh, she did it. She was a stay-at-home mom. She did all kinds of charity work, um, the charity league, um, raising a lot of money for uh, different uh, philanthropies, and uh, played a lot of tennis. And I said, you know, I said, you know, I'm sorry, but I think a lot of I said I was one of them. Uh, I think a lot of people have tennis as their religion and we spend a lot of money on our lessons and um, all that stuff <clears throat> and she said yeah you know it's that isn't really what's important now it's important for me to be taking care of um, our elderly parents so um, I ended up just a little bit you know she was like I you know I think that God would really want you to be happy and so but she says, you know, I don't know. She's like, I'm a Christian, but I don't know what the Bible has to say. So you have to be gentle with these people. Um, and I just, you know, very gently said, listen, um, this is, I, I, I have to live with a clean conscience. And I actually do read my Bible every morning and live according to what the Bible says. And and I'm I'm very happy. I'm, I have a clean conscience. I pray. I talk with God. Um, and I have joy, and I can't uh, I can't do anything about what's been done against me. Uh, you know, I told her that you know things are not perfect in my life, and that uh, you know uh, relationships have left. That it you know I love them, and I you know I pray for them. And if they were to turn around and come back and ask for forgiveness and wanting to um, reestablish and reconcile a relationship I was like yes I would be great that would be great um, you know I was telling her about you know that my children she was like what about your children and and it, you know at first I just shared the general stuff but then she's like no really do you talk to your children very often now that's really actually the enemy okay which I can be my swan and shake my wings the enemy is trying to make me feel like Wow, you know, your children aren't calling you, you're, you know, that's the enemy. I know it's the enemy. And I'm just like, no, you know, they made their choice. They have to live with it. And if they were to um, come to repent, you know, I didn't use the word repentance. But I said, if it turns out that they realize that they really didn't treat their mother the right way. And y'all, it is true that the Bible says we have to honor our father and mother in the best way that we can. Um, but I said, you know. If it turns out that they were to ask for forgiveness and want to reestablish the relationship, I'm ready to go. And I said, and I said, you know, the same thing goes for my husband. I said, I'm still wearing my wedding rings. I'm still doing what Jesus says. I'm not miserable. I'm happy. I, I'm pouring into other people's lives. But if it turned out that my husband were to come back and say, you know, I'm really sorry what I did and I would like uh, to reestablish the relationship, 
I would do that. And she's like, well, I know a lot of Christians who found other, other spouses and they're perfectly happy. <laughs> well, one day uh, it's going to come out. It's, you know, we don't know when it is, but it is, uh, time is running short. But always keep your heart tender and compassionate because they really don't know that they don't know. They, they really do believe that they are Christians, but they don't know that they don't have ears to hear the Holy Spirit. So I can pray for them to, you know, that God will, He will come to them and, and uh, pursue them and maybe even tell them, hey, you know, when you ran into Terry today, because I did say, I said something like, I can't believe we, you know, we don't ever, I haven't seen you in years, and here we run into the grocery store at the same time, and she's like, yeah, and I go to all these different grocery stores, but God had me walk in at that particular moment to plant some seeds, plant some seeds, you know, and that's all I can do, and that's what I hope you're doing too. Just be sensitive to what God's telling you to do and, and make the effort. Don't be lazy just to sit there and go, well, someone else will do that. Or God didn't really want me to put myself out there where somebody might reject me or hurt me or say something mean to me. No. And really, I mean, we have, we have not been through any kind of suffering or persecution like the rest of the Christians around the world right so i love you uh i hope that you're really you know spend more time in your bible than you do on youtube please <laughs> all right i love you god bless you keep singing oh yeah i was gonna say oh yeah what was the song i, I started singing um da 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 oh it's that right I'll, uh, don't rain on my parade, I'll march my band out, I'll beat my drum, and if I, dum, dum, da -da 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 -bum -bum. God can use anything, you know, I was just like, after I ran into her, I was singing that song, and, uh, anyway, this is not about singing songs to make you feel good, get your own song, ask God to give you one. And I know he does. I know he does. I know a lot of y'all put in the comments like, I asked God for a song and he gave me a song. And he will. He wants you to have the joy. He wants you to have a song on your heart. David was always singing songs. David was a man after God's own heart. Okay. I'll stop teaching now. I love you and I am praying for you. And uh, be wise. Pay attention to what the voices are that you're hearing and make sure that what you're hearing agrees with the scriptures or you will be paying the consequences for going your own way and stay, and not staying within the will of the Father. All right. Love you. Bye. <laughs>